Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at a new portable solid state drive from Samsung. It looks expensive because it is. This is the X5 and this is a Thunderbolt 3 only portable solid state drive, which means you have to have a Thunderbolt 3 equipped computer for it to work. It is the same connector as USB-C, but it will not work with a computer that doesn't have that Thunderbolt technology built in. Uh, we'll compare it in a little bit to the Samsung T5 that we reviewed a few months back, which is a great portable solid state drive for USB computers. Uh, but again, this one is going to require that Thunderbolt technology, but as you'll see, it is much, much faster than a comparable USB drive, but you will be paying quite a bit for that privilege. Now, before we get into this, I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this drive is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is made out of magnesium, and they've got this really nice clear coating on it as well. It looks like a car finish, actually. Uh, and it's got this nice design because it costs a small fortune. This one, 500 gigabytes, is $400. That's the starting point. Uh, you have a one terabyte version for $700 and a $1,400 two terabyte version. Now by comparison, the very capable T5 drive here will start at around $110 for 500 gigabytes. So you can see really the huge price difference between a super fast drive and one that is still very fast and very capable. So just uh, keep all this in mind as we're going through all of these things. It is fanless and it's powered by the computer itself. And one of the things that you might encounter with this drive because of how it's constructed is that as it gets hotter, it will thermal throttle itself to slow down. We'll see if we can get that thermal throttling to kick in with our benchmark in a minute. Uh, so just be aware of that. It will get a little warm to the touch as you're using it. And as I mentioned, it requires Thunderbolt 3. And I did try out my Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapter that I got when I bought my MacBook Pro last year. Uh, and that did not work with this on older Thunderbolt equipped computers. So I tried it on a Thunderbolt 2 iMac along with a Thunderbolt 1 MacBook Air. It didn't mount on either one of those computers. So it looks like it's really going to be uh, sticking to Thunderbolt 3 only. Uh, there was some Q&A on the Amazon listing that said if you had a Thunderbolt dock, it would work with that. I tried two different docks and had no luck there either. So this is really strictly going to be a Thunderbolt 3 equipped device. And there's really not much to it here. You just plug it in and you are off and running with it. Now inside of this is a Samsung 970 EVO NVMe drive. This is the same type of hard drive you might see on a mid to high end laptop or desktop computer. They're PCI Express drives. They're very, very fast. Uh, if you were to take this apart, you could probably swap it out, but it's really not easy to get inside of it. A non-tech uh, did do that, and I'll put a link to it uh, on the video description so you can see what it's got inside of it. So let's see what kind of performance we get out of this drive here. We're writing at about uh, 1700 megabytes per second. That's about 1.7 gigabytes per second. And we're reading at about 2.3 gigabytes per second. Very, very fast. And if we're to do a quick Google calculation here of our gigabits per second, we're writing at about 14 and we're reading at about uh, 19 or so. So we're getting much better performance than what we would get out of USB. But one of the issues with this drive is that the longer it runs, the hotter it gets, especially when you're writing to the drive. So the write performance is not always going to be consistent. Now the test has been running for about five minutes or so, and we're gonna jump back now to that Blackmagic speed test. And you can see our write performance has declined significantly here because the drive is beginning to thermal throttle. You can see it happening right there. It started with a nice little burst there and then kind of dropped back down again. So this is important to keep in mind, especially if you're in environments that might be a little bit hot, outdoors, for example, in the sun, the drive may not perform as well as it might here at room temperature in my studio. Uh, we tested the drive on my MacBook Pro just now, connected up to its Thunderbolt 3 port. I also connected it to my Windows computer a little while ago. It's an Alienware uh, gaming laptop, their 15 inch laptop. And there we got slightly better sequential read and write performance. So let's take a look at my crystal disk mark results here. You can see we got uh, read speeds at around 2.7 gigabytes per second, and it was writing at around 2.3 gigabytes per second. So it looked like it was running a little faster on that Windows computer there. 
Uh, of note is the last result at the bottom. Uh, that is its single Q, single thread, random read and write performance. And you can see there uh, it drops down to a level that you kind of get with the uh, Samsung T5 here. But generally, these MVME drives do much better when you have multiple Qs writing and reading randomly from the drive. And the test here indicates that it does very well on those. So uh, all in a very nicely performing drive for the price. But just keep in mind, the hotter it gets, the slower it's going to get especially when it is writing to the disk. Now, I thought I would also just show you what the Samsung uh, T5, the USB drive, gets on this similar test here. Uh, you can see the write performance comes in around 400 megabytes or so per second, uh, and the read performance on these sequential tests comes in at around 500 or so. And you can check out my full review to get more details on the random reads and writes that uh, this drive is capable of. But if you don't really need uh, multi-gigabyte per second performance here, I think these uh, less expensive USB-based drives are just fine to consider because they really do uh, perform quite nicely and don't cost nearly as much as the Thunderbolt one does. And the less expensive USB drives will work with just about any device with a USB port that's been made in the last 15 or 20 years, including smartphones if you've got the right cable. Uh, this drive will only work with a Thunderbolt 3 equipped PC, which of course significantly limits its portability because if the other person you're tossing it to doesn't have a Thunderbolt port, it's not going to work at all. Now there is some encryption support on the drive. You have to enable it through software drivers that you install on the Mac or Windows. Uh, the Windows software was pretty easy to get up and running. You install it, you set the password, and you're done. Uh, it works similarly on the Mac, but the uninstall process on the Mac was a bit arduous. There are scripts to run. It really is not an easy uninstall process, and they need to improve that a bit. I generally don't use encryption on my drives. My SSDs are mostly used as edit drives, so we can toss them around here in the studio, but you have that option if you want it. But the software does have to be installed on every computer that you wish to decrypt the drive with. Uh, so there will be some overhead, but not a lot. Uh, the drive itself performs the same with that encryption software enabled, so I didn't see any uh, performance degradation at all with it, but I do think they could improve the uninstallation process on the Mac side of things. So overall, this is a very nicely performing drive and really gives a good indicator as to what is possible over Thunderbolt 3. Uh, this is significantly faster than any USB drive we've tested for sure, but you're dealing with some thermal throttling issues when you really start taxing the drive with large sequential writes. We saw a little bit of that in our test with the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test and a non-tech found in their article, which I'll link to down below, that sometimes that thermal throttling might make the drive run as slow as 60 megabytes per second. That's probably fine for doing you know, game capture or something like that, but if you are capturing uh, uncompressed raw 4K video, for example, that might be a deal breaker for some folks. So really uh, do some research before you jump in on this thing to make sure that the thermal throttling and the inconsistent write performance may not impact your particular project. I think they could have done a little better here on the casing to help keep it cool. It may not look as cool, but I think if they had maybe some heat sinks built into it or something that uh, would allow it to get rid of that heat a little better, even a fan or some kind of active, active cooling system, I think it would perform better. And it looks like they chose style here over substance to some degree. Uh, so just keep that in mind as you are out shopping. It is a fast drive, but not all the time. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Too Much Sauce, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.